was caught this morning. So, uh, they have all this protocol. We never know what, what is the protocol. Do you have any you know, you know, he had that same issue with President Obama at the inaugural, I remember. The president has a packed schedule today. It includes a meeting with Israel's president. Ru Big day for President Trump. He has just arrived in Israel. As you can imagine, there's massive security there. This is the first time a president's ever gone to Israel on his first foreign trip. And as you know, when you go on these trips, there are a lot of rules on these big events. Even world leaders seem to have a little confusion about where to stand. Take a look at what the cameras caught this morning. So, uh, they have all this protocol. We never know what, what is, is the protocol. Do you have any he had that same issue with President Obama at the inaugural, I remember. The president has a packed schedule today. It includes a meeting with Israel's president, Reuben Rivlin, a visit at the Western Wall in Jerusalem, and, of course, a meeting with Israel's prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. And later this week, President Trump heads to Europe, where he will meet with the pope and other world leaders. ABC's chief White House correspondent, John Carl, is in Jerusalem, has the latest details for us. Good morning, John. Good morning, Robin. President Trump made history the moment his plane touched down here in Israel. It is the very first time that Air Force One has gone directly to Israel from Saudi Arabia, a country which is both the birthplace of Islam and one that has absolutely no relations whatsoever with Israel and no direct flights. The president arrived in Israel in pursuit of what he calls the ultimate deal. Middle East peace. I have come to the sacred and ancient land to reaffirm the unbreakable bond between the United States and the state of Israel. No American president has visited Israel so early in his presidency. President Trump visiting the country's holiest sites, but his historic trip started in Saudi Arabia, the heart of the Islamic world. There, in the birthplace of Islam, an image that not long ago would have been impossible to imagine. Donald Trump offering a message of unity to the world's Muslim leaders. Terrorists do not worship God. They worship death. This is not a battle between different faiths, different sects, or different civilizations. This is a battle between barbaric criminals who seek to obliterate human life and decent people, all in the name of religion. In the audience, the leaders of more than 50 different Muslim nations. I stand before you as a representative of the American people to deliver a message of friendship and hope and love. That is why I chose to make my first foreign visit a trip to the heart of the Muslim world President's words and his tone dramatically different from the campaign when he proposed banning all Muslims from entering the U.S. and portrayed Islam as the enemy. I think Islam hates us. There's something, there's something there that there's a tremendous hatred there. This time, talk of partnership and cooperation in the war on terror. But he did challenge these leaders to take the lead in defeating the terrorists in their midst. A better future is only possible if your nations drive out the terrorists and drive out the extremists. Drive them out. Drive them out. And before he left Saudi Arabia, there was this incredible image. The president and the king, hands on a glowing orb. What were they doing? Opening up a new center in Saudi Arabia to counter extremists online. The president will be meeting here with Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu and with Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas, but these will be separate meetings. For all the talk of a peace deal by President Trump, the two sides at this point aren't even talking to each other about it yet.